Welcome back to GearWire.com. This is Ona Mally, and uh, this is a quick little tutorial on how to rewire record sessions into Logic. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why you might want to do that. Um, Logic may offer some plugins that you want to use to manipulate some of the audio that you've recorded in uh, in Record. It's sort of a way of getting getting past the fact that, or, or getting around the fact that Record doesn't host any third-party plugins. What you can do is rewire your audio from Record into a DAW like Logic, and then use well any plugin that you want, any plugin that's supported by the DAW. You rewire that audio into. Now, of course you're sort of stuck with the fact that you're going to be using your uh, record effects, your record rack effects first, and then feeding that audio into your DAW, but, well, Dems to breaks. So for this demonstration, I have uh, a session that I've recorded in Record, um, and that's a, s a session that I've loaded up before. It's uh, my sisters and I uh, performing uh, Harvest Moon by Neil Young. And one of my frustrations with record when first uh, recording that, boy, this is going to get confusing, was that while record has a really awesome mix interface and a lot of really great built-in effects, what I was really missing was a de-esser. And uh, you'll hear why when I start uh, playing back that session. But first things first, what you want to do is you want to open Logic first and then open your instance of record. And this is, if you've ever rewired uh, Reason into a DAW, it's the same basic procedure. You want to make sure your, your host DAW is open first, and then you launch Reason, or in this case, Record, because that places Record into Rewire Slave Mode. And you can make sure that it's in Rewire Slave Mode and Record by pressing F6 to go to the Rack View, which is what we're on right now. And then you check the little feedback uh, or the little display on your hardware interface graphic in the rack and you can see right there it says rewire slave mode so we are now in rewire slave mode then you want to go back to logic and you want to create an auxiliary channel in your mixer in logic here uh, that's going to accept the incoming audio from record so if your mixer window is not already open you can hit x to open your mixer window click on the little add auxiliary channel strip there. You want to make sure it's a stereo channel. And when you select your input, now you can see that we got record here, and the main record outputs are just called mix left, right. Now just create that channel. And now we can hit playback in Logic, and we'll start to hear playback from record. Uh, one thing to mention, though, before you open your previously saved session in Record as a rewire session, you want to make sure that your Logic BPM is set to whatever your Record session BPM was. The default Logic session BPM is 120. And if you open Logic and you open a new session in Logic and you, then you open a session in Record in rewire slave mode, your BPM from Logic is going to reset the BPM in Record. Now, Record does have that really cool time stretch feature, uh, but everything will be a little bit faster or slower. Well, it'll, it'll default to 120, uh, regardless of what you originally uh, opened the session at. So that's kind of a, a weird little thing. Anyway, we've got both of our sessions open here, so let's hit playback while we're in Logic. You can see that playback is is going in record also when we start that. They're, they're synced up. Come a little bit closer Hear what I have to say So let's stop playback. Now you can hear there's actually not too much sibilance going on in that first lead vocal right there. Uh, and that's because I've done a couple of well, workarounds in record. Uh, that's this lead right here that we were listening to. Let's expand that channel and just see what's going on here. You can see I've put an equalizer in there and I've used an instance of the Scream Sound Destruction Unit to try and combat the sibilance. And, and it's kind of worked pretty well, but 
uh, it took a lot of labor. Uh, I had to sort of manually find the frequency that the sibilance was occurring at and try and notch it out there. And that re really didn't sort of do the trick. So then I created an instance of Scream 4 and set it to tape distortion uh, and try to give it a little sort of natural sounding tape saturation. Let's actually just bypass both of these and hear, hear what that lead sounds like. Come a little bit closer Hear what I have to say You can hear it's a lot more sibilant. So in, in order to, to get rid of that sibilance, I had to kind of do quite a, quite a bit of sort of tweaking and, and manual sort of setting up of these devices. And I had to duplicate that for each of the three lead vocals because there's three, three lead vocal tracks on this, on this song, in this session. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is hit tab to look at the back of the rack. And what I'm going to do is go over to the direct out on this lead channel here. I'm going to left click on it or right click on it rather and I'm gonna send it to the hardware interface and I'm gonna send it to output 3 and 4 click on 3 and actually since it's mono it's just gonna attach the left to the left up here so now I'm I'm completely bypassing the the main mixer I'm completely bypassing the insert effects on that channel and sending just this lead channel it, sort of two logic parallel to the the main outputs so let's go back to our logic session here and what we want to do now now that we have that sort of uh, sort of output three just kind of floating in the aether there we want to catch it with a new channel here we're gonna make it a mono channel and it's channel three on rewire and let's create that okay You can see that that's now playing back on what we've called aux2. And let's just name these channels so we don't get lost. So here's our record LR. And this is now Catherine Box. So now instead of being limited to the devices that Record comes packaged with, we can now use any plugin that can be hosted in Logic to process this vocal channel. Let's just load one of the uh, Logic 8 sort of vocal presets here and hear what that sounds like. So that's the basic idea. You can see how this technique pretty much lets you use third-party plugins with record. Not directly, not just direct channel inserts, but it does mean that if you start a recording session in record, you're not limited to the plugins that record comes shipped with. You can get the audio out of record and into pretty much any DAW uh, that's, uh, that supports rewire. It's almost like record is your in-the-box session mixer and then Logic becomes your outboard hardware mixer that you're feeding your session through. Of course, maybe you've also got a session that's started in record, but then it's feeding Logic, but then Logic is also feeding some outboard hardware, which is ending up in a master Pro Tools session. Man, this is starting to feel like Inception a little bit. Thanks for watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley.